Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to join this moment in which we're introducing the Equality Act of 2015. It's fitting that we come together in this room, a room named after President Lyndon Johnson, who 51 years ago this month signed into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964, a law which he said would, and I quote, promote a more abiding commitment to freedom, a more constant pursuit of justice, and a deeper respect of human dignity. It was a turning point in our history when we as a nation challenge unjust laws and destructive prejudices and choose to advance basic civil rights to, as in the vision of Dr. Martin Luther King, bend the arc of the moral universe towards justice. For more than two centuries, this has been our nation's most sacred charge to build a more perfect union. Step by step, stride by stride, the barriers that once prevented people from enjoying the full measures of liberty and of dignity have broken down. But as you know, there's much more to be done to secure that reality for each and every American. In this country, we believe that all of us are created equal, that we have certain unalienable rights. Yet today, many of our citizens do not receive equal treatment, and they do not receive equal rights. Not because of anything that they have done, but because of who they are, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. There's no question that we have made great progress in advancing the rights of the LGBT community. But as long as people are afraid to put their spouse's photo on their desk at work, as long as they're worried about it being evicted from their apartment if they don't pretend to be just roommates, we've got a lot of work to do. The harsh reality is that in far too many states, there are still no laws explicitly prohibiting discrimination against LGBT Americans. This means that while same-sex couples can today legally marry, tomorrow they could lose their jobs, be kicked out of a restaurant, or turned down for a mortgage just because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. The time has come to right this wrong. The time has come for us as a nation to be bolder and better in ensuring full rights and full equality for our LGBT brothers and sisters. The comprehensive bipartisan legislation that we are presenting today, David Cicilline leading in the House, his partnership with John Lewis, and in the Senate, the partnership with Tammy Baldwin and Cory Booker, and more than a hundred other members of the House and Senate. This comprehensive bipartisan legislation that we will introduce together today will usher in uniform federal standards to protect all LGBT Americans from discrimination in housing, in workplaces, in schools, in public accommodations, and financial transactions. It will close long-standing gaps in legal protections against sex discrimination as well ensuring that women are treated equally in all specs, aspects of their lives. Discrimination has no place in our nation's laws. If it's wrong in marriage, it is wrong in employment. If it's wrong in employment, it is wrong in housing. If it's wrong in housing, it's wrong in education and jury duty and mortgages. Put simply, people deserve to live free from fear free from violence, and free from discrimination, regardless of who they are or whom they love. Writing these protections into the law will bring us a significant stride forward in our nation's long march towards inclusion, equality, and opportunity, and will extend the full promise of America to every American. Here with us today, we have individuals who have experienced the discrimination firsthand, and they will be talking about that. We will have these folks stepping forward, but let me give you a sense of how we'll proceed. First, David Cicilline, who has led this effort in partnership with John Lewis in the House, will speak, followed by Tammy Baldwin, John Lewis, and Cory Booker. Then we'll have leadership from the two houses, 
of the Democratic leadership, and then we'll turn to these families, and then we will turn to additional individuals, interests representing interest groups that have been key parts of preparing for this day, and other members of Congress who have been important voices and will make their voice heard today. So it is a bit of a lineup, but it reflects the importance of what we're addressing. And with that, Congressman David Cicilline, and it's been wonderful to work in partnership with you.